Sorry I missed you last week. It was actually my birthday, so I took it off, but uh, let's get into this video, shall we? Because this is a cool one. There's a lot of photos that you can take with your clients or your couples and things like that, and everyone's looking for like creative ways. And I'm not saying this is like a completely new way, but this is a cool creative way to create kind of a neat new photo for your clients. So I'm gonna show you how to do it, how to take it, how to edit it. Lego. Will Simpson here and welcome back to the channel. Today we are going over what I talked about in the beginning of this video. I don't need to repeat myself, I don't think. Some people do, I don't think I need to. Anyways, so the first thing you're gonna do is when you're with your clients is you gotta take two photos. Now, the cool thing about this method, this two photo, three photo method, is you can get super creative. You can do silhouettes, you can do hands above the image, above them kissing, or you can do, in this case, a reflection photo, which is what I'm gonna show you. But there is no limit to the creativity of this photo. So, but the first thing you're gonna do is kind of think it out. So when you are, planning these photos, think of what you want to create. Do you want to do a <laughs> doo-doo? <laughs> do <laughs> I'm such a child. Um, do you want to do like a silhouette photo with them in the middle? Do you want to do a photo of them from far away with their hands touching above? In this case, I wanted to do a reflection because they were engaged. So I wanted to kind of create them proposing with them kissing up top. So I had to think this out. So I needed to find a puddle that I could work with that was flat. I needed to have them stay in the same location, do the kissing photo, and then him recreate him proposing, taking the photo almost exactly the same way. So using a tripod sometimes helps. This was pretty rel it was relatively easy. I just told him what I wanted to do, held up the camera, took the photo, told him to change positions, took the photo. I didn't even move, so it wasn't that hard. Uh, and then what you do is you take these photos into Lightroom and edit them together and we're gonna go through that now. So the first thing you wanna do is obviously you pick the two photos you want. So here is the first photo and here is the second photo. And I wanted them, the proposal in the reflection because they had already done that. And if you look at, if you look in close at this first, the photo on top, you'll notice that she has her ring on her finger. So it was kind of like a, you know, remembrance photo. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna pick one of the photos and we're just gonna do the basic edit. So for this photo, drop the highlights, raise the shadows, bring back some details, set the white balance, up a little bit of the contrast, not much. Uh, we're gonna set the white and black points by pressing and holding option and then finding where blacks and whites are correct. Then we're going to lower the clarity, just to kind of soften the image a little bit, uh, raise the dehaze just to get more of the details back. Now I wanted to check on the sky because I really like the sky in this image. So first I'm gonna darken the image, get the sky back. Now I could have done this by using a mask and like um, just doing the image, just doing the sky and darkening it. In this case, I'm gonna go this route and I'm not exactly sure why, but this is just what I'm gonna do. So we're gonna select the subject with another mask and bring back the details on them. Uh, then we gotta make another mask and we're going to select the background. With this one, we're going to select the sky, subtract the sky because we wanna brighten up the foreground. And then it always has all of these little halos around the subjects. So we're gonna subtract all of that, get rid of all of those extra selections, and we're going to brush and add what it missed. So in this case, it missed the reflection because again, we're gonna replace this. So we don't really need that. Um, then we're gonna fine tune it. So really get in there and find the sections that it missed, add anything that it didn't add and subtract anything that it added that we don't want. This part of the, the editing, you could be as specific or general as you want. You don't have to be super exact, but I like to be pretty specific in the beginning edits just because it, it makes for a more, um, well, the more detail oriented you are, the better your final image will look. So it's totally up to you how far you wanna go with this, but in this case, I wanted to go pretty, pretty specific because I am blending two images. So the more accurate they are together, the better it will look in the final image. 
Good, now that we got the selection done, let's raise the exposure of the foreground there to kind of balance out. So now we have the sky and we have the subject exposed and we have the foreground exposed, it looks good. Now there is a little spot here that I want to remove. Uh, remove these guys, remove them, the mask from them, and then remove this little section uh, by his leg and on his arm here. This will just make the mask even cleaner. And this might take long, this might take short, it's totally up to you again. Okay, good. Now that we have all of this done, we are going to crop it, straighten out the image, use the little angle tool here, and you can get a perfect horizon. Straighten that out, crop it four by five, get them in the center best we can. We wanna keep the sky, so we're gonna try and keep a bunch of the sky in there. Enter, and then, you know, let's, let's make a little adjustment on the sky here. Let's go ahead and create a mask for the sky. And I always, when I select the sky, I always subtract the subject because it never does a perfect job. And we're gonna brighten that up a little bit and warm it up a little bit. Eh, maybe cool it down. I don't know, nah, we'll leave it as is. We'll add a little bit of magenta. There we go, that looks good. Okay, good. Now let's copy everything, including the crop. Go to the second image because we wanna make it identical. Paste, takes a second and voila, wait for it, there it is. Okay, good, now we have to adjust all the masks because we did subtractions on the other image, so we're gonna go through here, select all the adjustment brushes that we made, because we're gonna have to do them again to fit for this image. So first, take the select subject, we're going to subtract the reflection, because we don't care about the reflection. Once that's done, we are going to then go to the, the foreground and we're going to add the reflection in this one, just so it ba balances. And then we're going to subtract any part of the subject that we don't think applies. Get rid of this section here because that's part of the sky, not the, <laughs> not the foreground element. Good, get rid of the little halo around them as a subject, just kind of clean up the edges re-add the edge that got taken away. Good. It's looking nice. Then we're gonna select both images, right click on them, go to edit in and open as layers in Photoshop. This is important. Don't open in Photoshop, open as layers in Photoshop. I accidentally opened it in Photoshop, it opens them individually. This way, if you open them as layers, it puts them in one single file. Now, once you're in Photoshop with your images, depending on your image, you can do a couple of things. With this one, uh, I want to try the auto align. So you're gonna go, you're gonna select both image, both layers, go to edit, go to auto align layers, and then select auto, press okay. This takes no time at all, and you can look at it and see if it works. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. In this case, because the subjects were different positions, it doesn't, it aligns her to, to her, and it just doesn't look right. So I don't think I'm gonna go with this way here. Let's go ahead and undo. What we're gonna do is lower the opacity of this and just kind of adjust it so it looks good. Basically, I want them kissing in the center. It looks pretty good as is, so I think we're, we're fine as it is. We want the, the horizons to be aligned and the rest we can work with. So the next thing we're gonna do is fit, pick which layer we want on top. So the first one, again, like I said, I want them in proposing inside the reflection. So we're gonna make the top layer the proposal. We're gonna go to quick select and select subject. Then this is where it's tedious. You're gonna refine the tool. They refine the selection. I don't want any of the reflection, so we'll remove that. Then pressing and holding option. Then we're gonna use the lasso tool and we're just going to quickly go through and refine the selection. The more exact you are, the better this will be. This is just, it's gonna be easier to make sure it's really, really clean. So I'm gonna speed this up, go through all this, make all these selections and just kind of refine the selection quite a bit. Now that we have the selection, we're gonna press Command or Control J. This will create a layer with our selection. We're going to flip them vertical. So Command T and then right click, flip vertical. We're gonna align them to kind of where their reflection is, but we are going to adjust this. Next, we're gonna turn off this layer and then we're gonna to go to the other layer and we are going to mask out the bottom half and then invert it. That way we have them kissing on top and then we have the layer on bottom. Then we're gonna select using the lasso tool, 
the portion of their reflection in the proposal. And we're going to go up to image, go to edit, go to content aware fill, and get rid of their reflection. Generally, it does a pretty good job here. It did a great job. So once it's done, press OK. Press Command D to deselect, turn on the other layer, and this is where we're just gonna kind of fine tune and select where, or put where they go. So Command T, and then just kind of move them how you want until you got them in the right spot. Once that's done, create another mask with the brush tool, press B, uh, make sure black is the foreground color, and we're going to paint away using the brush, paint away, um, this this selection now that you notice this line here we're going to get rid of that line from the other mask from the other layer and using the brush tool bring back our reflection good just make it really really clean i have plenty of plenty of uh, other videos on how to do this so i'm not really going to go into explaining this so if you want i'll uh i have some photoshop basic videos that will help explain how to use the brush tool and all of those things but basically black conceals, white reveals. So I'm just using mask to bring them in and just making it look as clean as I can. All right, so here we go. Making it look like he disappears into the sand because it is a reflection. Good, looking, looking pretty good. All right, here we go. Now, next we're gonna create a layer that a combined layer of all the previous layers. So sh on a Mac, Shift, Command, Option, E. Then we are going to trace using the lasso tool, the bottom part, the reflection, go up to Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur, and we're gonna do about 9.3 on the blur. We don't wanna do too much because it looks fake. We don't wanna do too little. So just about 9.3 works. This might differ per the images. And there we go, now we got the reflection. Now we need to adjust the crop a little because they're not centered and I hate when they're not centered. So we'll make this a little bit bigger, get them centered to the rule of thirds, press enter. And then using the lasso, polygon lasso tool, uh, we're going to select the unfilled areas of the image, go to edit, content aware fill, and this should make a pretty good fill. Okay, good, I like it, that is looking good. Sometimes Photoshop works so good and sometimes it does not. In this case, it worked pretty good, but we are gonna go through and just kind of look where the line is, make sure everything looks clean. There is a little spot right there above her head that looks a little wonky, so we'll use the stamp tool to fill that in, but otherwise, it looked great. Okay, good, now the next thing, because this is looking amazing right now, and actually it's been relatively easy. But now we wanna make a selection of the subject and we want the entire subject. So we want her and the reflect, we want them on top and them on the reflection. So I'm gonna speed this up again because again, this is just refining the selection and making it look really nice. Uh, I used a mix of the lasso tool and the quick select tool to make this selection. But now that we've got the selection, press Command J, which gives us a layer with just them on the selections. Then select the copy, the layer below them. And we're gonna fix this kind of line here, which we could have fixed by using a little feather on the blur of the blur selection, but that's fine. We'll just kind of clean this up here and make it so it doesn't look so harsh and uh, so harsh and just rigid line. Uh, once we've fixed that, we go to the selection that we made of them and press the E, uh, e tool and erase that part of the mask just so it doesn't look weird as well. Good, here we go. That looks really nice. Now, gonna select layer two copy, press command and control J to make another copy of it. Go to blur, Gaussian blur. We're gonna create a little bit of a, of a glow. So about 31 on the blur, blend mode to hard light, gives us a nice glow and some kind of uh, softness and then lower the opacity to that layer to 30% and that just makes that kind of pop a little bit. Looks a little, a little bit sharper, a little bit more angelic, I guess you could say, just kind of glow. Okay, good. Next, we're going to make another layer, uh, another complete layer, shift command option E, and we're just going to clean up the image. This is just a mix of the spot healing tool and the stamp tool. So it's kind of, again, 
whatever is just basic cleanup stuff, nothing crazy. So let's go ahead and speed this up really fast. All right, now that is looking really nice. So let's go back into Lightroom, Command S, and we are back in Lightroom with our almost complete image. Now at this point, you can edit it however you want. I have tons of preset packs available on my website, and for this one, I went with the Light and Airy number one to give us a base edit start. Um, I also tried a few other ones, and they did look really nice, but with this one, I just went like this. First, we're gonna lower the exposure, then add a linear gradient to take that, that kind of glow, that highlight off of their face create another mask to select the subject. Again, refine it, so get rid of the extra that the mask added that we don't need. Part of the sky here, we had part of the, the between his legs there, between them. Just refine the mask here, and then we're going to warm them up. We're gonna get a really big contrasty photo here. So warm them up, and then we're going to click the three dots duplicate and invert, which gives us an exact duplicate of the mask, but inverted. So everything that we didn't have selected is now selected and everything we had selected is now not selected, which is really good for making less adjustments in your masks. Then we're gonna darken that down to make them pop off the image. And once that's done, create a new mask, do a radial gradient, which we're gonna add a sun flare. So place this right here, subtract subject, raise the exposure, and add a little bit of orangey tint there to really make it like, like it is the sun flare, but we don't wanna to do too much. Add a little linear gradient here, darken it to really pull the attention to the subjects. And we are looking spicy right now. Another radial gradient right here, subtract the subject, and this will make them kind of pop and then invert it. So we create kind of a vignette around them, and here is our final image. Now, after I did this edit, I did create a little bit more. I added another preset of mine called my Elemental Preset, which is part of my Exploring Photography preset pack. I lowered the effects a little bit, added some softening, added a little bit more blur in the bottom, did a few more tweaks, but in the end, here is the final image, which I think turned out incredible. It's got that soft, uh, glowy look, very light and airy, but still with some color and some emotion, and it turned out absolutely great. So if you're interested in any of these presets, I'll link a link, in, oh, I'll link a link, I'll link a link in the website. <laughs> I'll put a link in the description below to my website so you can get those. There is a combo pack which you get a ton of presets for like 40 bucks I think. It's really cheap. It's awesome. It's all of my preset packs that I have all in that bundle pack. But this is a really cool and creative way. I hope you enjoyed this video. Go ahead and hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and I would love to see what creative ideas you do. So if you have ideas, if you try this technique, send them to me on Instagram, post me, post them, tag them, tag me in them, however you wanna do it. But yeah, good stuff. I'll see you guys next week. <laughs>